you want to start uh, talking to your slides, introduce yourself, Linda, and then uh, start talking to your slides. Uh, thank you. I will start. Good afternoon. My name is Linda Tano, and I am the sister in charge of the Obstetrics and Gynecology Ward at the Eastern Highlands Provincial Hospital. I am also the president of the Eastern Highlands Pub Grant of the Papua New Guinea Nibi Free Society. I would like to give you an idea of what midwives are doing up to sorry in the province and the activities of the Nibi Free Society here. We are in Goroka, the capital of Eastern Highlands Province, in the Highlands region of Papua New Guinea. The population of the province is approximately 650,000, including approximately 130,600 women of childbearing age who are having about 16,600 babies each year. Family planning coverage is 26%, and the fertility rate is 4.4 children per woman. 733 women die of maternity-related causes per 100,000 life births in Papua New Guinea. There are many reasons for this, including geographical barriers. Women may walk three days to reach a health facility. Illiteracy. Many women have not completed grade one, so are unwilling to sow ignorance and so fail to attend clinics. Some facilities are run down and sort of drugs. There is a manpower shortage within the health facilities, and some staff demonstrate negative attitude towards patients seeking care. There are high poverty rates and high fertility rates. Domestic violence where husbands do not permit women to attend clinics. These issues lead to women having their babies in their village. The rate of births unsupervised by skilled birth attendants is approximately 65% in Eastern Highlands province. This map shows the eight districts of the Eastern Highlands province. Each district as a health center except Goroka, which has a provincial hospital, and Kainantu, which has a rural hospital. In each district, there are a number of health sub-centers. The major road is the Highland Highway running roughly east-west. Most other roads are unpaved and often difficult to navigate due to heavy rainfall and landslides. Those sub health centers in the southeast of the province are only accessible by air. All sub health centers and health centers manage pregnant, birthing, and postnatal women and their babies. Midwives are only working in the Eastern Highlands Provincial Hospital, each of the district health centers, and some of the sub health centers. Therefore, a large proportion of women who do attend health facilities for pregnancy and childbearing, child, sorry, child caring, birthing care, are managed by nursing officers and community health workers with limited skills in midwifery. The maternity department at the provincial hospital consists of labor wards the obstetrics and gynecology ward and special care nursery. The labor ward has seven beds, and in 2013, 4,374 beds were recorded, an average of 12 per day. 240 cesarean sections were performed, 5.5% of the hospital beds. It is staffed by 10 midwives and three community health workers. Some examples of the types of patients include fetal death in utero, 
101 recorded in 2013, breach 82, severe preeclampsia 31, eclampsia 1, HIV positive 75, uterine rupture 4, postpartum hemorrhage 367, maternal death 8. The obstetrics and gynecology ward has 21 beds. About 7,000 women were admitted in 2013, about 20 every day. These included postnatal women, sick antenatal women, and gynecologists. The ward is staffed by eight midwives and four community health workers. A special care nursery can manage up to 21 ba 27 babies at one time and had 1,016 admissions in 2013. The nursery is staffed by two midwives, six nurses, and five community health workers. Kama Antenatal Clinic, which is within the Ground Social Hospital, managed 3,978 new antenatal women in 2013, over 300 per month. Antenatal consultations for new women, three attendees are conducted on four days, and Fridays are utilized for sexually transmitted infections. It is not unusual to have over 50 women per day at the clinic. The clinic is staffed by three midwives, three registered nurses, and three community health workers. Lupa District is one of the eight districts in the province. The health center there is staffed by three midwives, and it is fortunate enough to have a maternity waiting house. Women from remote areas can come there at the end of their pregnancy and wait for labor close to the health center. One of the sub health centers in Lupa district is Lupuru, also has a midwife, but this is unusual. So you can see that the midwives of the province have an extremely challenging job caring for women and their babies. Professor Pat Prodi is an Australian midwife who was working in Papua New Guinea in 2010, investigating the quality and quantity of midwives in the country. She visited Goroka, and we local midwives were inspired to develop a sub branch of the Papua New Guinea Midwife System. During 2011 to 2012, we identified all the midwives in the province. And in 2012, Sonia Korowi and myself visited Sydney to learn about midwifery society. In August 2012, we gained approval from the National Office of the Midwifery Society to set up a sub in the Eastern Highlands province. The sub is over aging aim is to reduce the maternal mortality ratio in the Eastern Highlands province. We want to be a strong voice and advocate for midwives and midwifery in the province. Increase numbers of quality of midwives and ensure all women have access to midwifery. This year we have 102 members of which 88 are midwives. The others are affiliate members. 47 at the provincial hospital six at the University of Goroka, nine within Church Health Services, three at the Papua New Guinea Institute of Medical Research, 22 in the District Government Health Centers and Staff Health Centers, six at the Highlands Regional College of Nursing, six working for non-government organizations, and three in other settings. So far, the sub -brands has managed to produce a constitution, which 88 midwives in all districts of the province. The society has encouraged and supported the staffing of 
labor ward and the obstetrics and gynecological exclusively by midwives. Previously, general nurses were working in these areas with fewer numbers of midwives. The society has formed close linkages with the Bachelor of Midwifery Program staff and students from the University of Gorokai. We have formed a strong relationship with Australian College of Midwives. In 2013, we arranged the local telephone service provider, Telecom, to connect the internet to the hospital mess and gather the members of the Midwifery Society to participate in the online conference. The society has encouraged 70% of midwives in the province to attend emergency of the care training and encourages midwives to perform research in their own clinical settings. The future is exciting. The society will elect a new executive in 2014. An in-service training program will be developed at the provincial hospital. The society will assist with essential obstetric care training for midwives and other rural health staff. We are planning a provincial, provincial midwifery conference. The society will also collaborate with the Papua New Guinea Nursing Council to expedite the registration of graduated midwives with a Bachelor of Midwifery program for ways to improve quality of care within the clinical area. The Eastern Highlands sub branch of the Papua New Guinea Midwifery Society will continue to investigate ways to motivate all midwives to provide best practice care to our women. I would like to thank the Visual International Day of Midwives for the opportunity to share our experiences and vision with other midwives around the world. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Linda. That was great. Lovely and clear and well paced. Um, a lot of information in there. So uh, uh, I just wondered if you wanted to share what the picture was at the bottom right hand corner, which I thought was so interesting the other day. Uh, uh, These women are dressed in their traditional costumes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Sing Sing Group in Papua New Guinea, we call it a Sing Sing Group. And a Sing Sing Group. Yes. <laughs> they are dressed in, like. in their traditional costumes. You look beautiful. Um, okay, thank you. There, there will be probably questions at the end, so um, if uh, we can now ask um, uh, Wanis if she is ready to present, and her presentation should come on behind this. Are you right to go, Wanis? Yes. Yes, right. Dean. Lovely. You, you can start now. <clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is uh, Wanis Koral and I'm a midwife at the Eastern Island Provincial Hospital in Goroka, Papua New Guinea. I trained as a nurse, graduated in 1993 and trained as a midwife in 2007. Since that time, I have worked in the labor ward of the hospital. The Eastern Island Provincial Hospital is located in Guruka, the provincial capital, and is the only tertiary facility in the province. It takes referral from the one rural hospital, two urban clinics in Guruka, six health centers, and 26 sub health centers in the province. Sub health centers may refer initially to a health center or a rural hospital at Kainanti, but some refer directly to the Eastern Islands Provincial Hospital. 
During my years working at the hospital, I noticed a large number of referrals arriving and the burden of this extra workload on the staff and resources of the hospital. I decided to conduct this research to explore the issue. The study aims included assessing the, assessing the appropriateness of the condition of the woman being referred, recording the referral outcome and the level of healthcare present at the delivery, recording the cost involved in transporting the woman to the hospital and who met the cost, highlighting the issues in the provincial health system with limited resources, manpower and logistics, identifying strengths and weaknesses in the system for future planning. I performed this study as part of a research training program for health workers at the hospital with support from the Papua New Guinea Institute of Medical Research. I sought approval from the hospital administration and the provincial health authority consent was obtained from each woman. Mothers who had been referred to the hospital labor ward were assessed on arrival and monitored until delivery. I collected information from the referral letter, the labor ward register, and by interviewing the mother. I collected information about 96 obstetric referrals from 22 health facilities between October 2012 and May 2013. This number did not include every referral to the hospital, only those I was personally aware of and able to interview. The mother's age, age ranked from 16 to 40 years. Seven were less than 18 years old, 79 were between 18 and 35 years, and 10 were older than 35 years. In fact, many women, particularly in rural and remote areas, do not know their age. Many may have been born at home with no record kept for their birth date, or their parents may have been illiterate. The recorded ages could be estimated or guesses by the patient or health staff. The largest proportion of referral mothers were primary parents. There are a wide range of reasons for referring women. In 18 cases, there were more than one reason for referral. All are included in the table. Some were referred as a precaution due to high risk factors such as multiple pregnancy, post term pregnancy, malpression patients, and short stature of the woman. This woman may or may not have been in labor. Others were referred when complications had occurred, such as antipartum hemorrhage, fetal distress, and arm prolapse. The major reason for referral was for prolonged and obstructed labor. Many diagnosed by referring health workers as CPD or cephalopelvic disproportion. This slide shows less common reasons but include one logistical problem, no light, solar out of order. There is no electricity supply outside the larger towns in the province. So most health facilities rely on solar lights at night. Uncooperative mother is a common diagnosis in Papua New Guinea and often indicates a lack of knowledge, both in the woman and the health, care, health worker caring for her. Three quarters of the referrals ended up with vaginal delivery, either normal vaginal delivery or vacuum extraction. One quarter were delivered by cesarean section. Doctors mainly managed those mothers requiring cesarean section. There were 22 and 3 of the vacuum extractions. Health extension officers are highly leveled health workers who receive four years training and work in hospitals and health centers at a higher level than nurses and midwives. They manage two of the normal vaginal deliveries. Midwives in Papua New Guinea have a broad range of skills and their role extends to performing vacuum extraction. Midwives perform 10 of the 13 vacuum extractions and 49 of the 59 normal vaginal deliveries. Two thirds of the referral cases deliveries were managed by midwives 
or staff supervised by the midwives, such as midwifery and nursing students and community health workers. 28 of the 96 referrals came from Kainantur Rural Hospital. Although there is at least one doctor working in this facility, it does not have the capacity to perform a current section. 43 referrals from several centers bypass the health center they are attached to and arrive directly to the provincial hospital. This may have been because the health center was closed, particularly at night, or because of the agency of the referral. District health centers may be staffed by health extension officers, midwives, nurses, and community health workers. Several centers are usually staffed by nurses and community health workers. These health workers do not have the skills necessary to manage women with complicated pregnancy and labor. The majority of women refer travel to hospital by ambulance. Some arrange arrange their own transport by public bus or private vehicle. Some came by hair. Some of the most distant sub health centers have no road access and therefore refer directly to the provincial hospital by plane. Although the majority of others were transported by ambulance, only one quarter did so at no cost. Half of the referred patients had to pay more than 50 kina, the equivalent of 20 Australian dollars 18 US dollars or 13 euros. This cost was paid by either the woman herself or one of her relatives. There are a few midwives in peripheral health centers. Most staff are nurses and community health workers whose knowledge and skills are inadequate to manage betting women. An example of the lack of adequate skills and knowledge is demonstrated by the 18 mothers. Preferred for obstetric, obstructed labor and cephalopelvic disproportion. Fourteen of these mothers delivered vaginally and only four by cesarean section. The actual problem is a lack of skills and knowledge in assessing and managing women in labor. The fact that two thirds of all the referred cases were managed by midwives in the hospital supports the government's aim to place a midwife in every health center and sub health center by 2020. By placing midwives in the health center, women could remain in their community to bed and referrals to tertiary hospitals would be decreased substantially. Although most referrals are transported by ambulance from health center facilities, most of them still have to pay. Sometimes a significant amount of their transport. These are supposed to be free and most people in rural areas are subsistence farmers and do not have much spare cash. This may impact on people using health services and need further investigation. Health services do not do have a budget to transport patients, so some of that money may be being used for other purposes. Infrastructure in Papua New Guinea is lacking. The lack of solar power for life is one health center highlights the need for a reliable source of power in health facilities. Whether it is central supply generator or an alternate form such as solar, there is a general lack of maintenance of health facilities in the province. This is a system of referral. There is a system of referral within the host province, and women have been transported to hospitals, but there is an agent need to improve this system. Difficulties include the health center staff, lack of knowledge and about caring for women and the cost of transport, complicated by difficult terrain and lack of good road. More research required in this area, and there are already more studies being undertaken in the Eastern Islands province. I would like to thank you all for the opportunity to present my research today. Thank you, Juanis. That was wonderful um, and amazingly how clear, clearly we heard you considering the internet issues you've been having and how difficult some of our practice sessions were. That was just wonderful on the day. Um, and also just like to thank, thank uh, Jane Carroll who's been, yeah, who's been uh, working in the background to um, help Linda and um, Juanis come to 
uh, this session and to present today. So thank you very much and um, let's see if there's some questions for you. You've got a lot of really good comments down the side. You might like to just read through some of those. People have really appreciated the the effort you've made to uh, to come and talk on the VIDM and also um, the, the strides you've made in, <coughs> in improving things for women in um, Papua New Guinea. So <coughs> um, you, you can feel really good about that. Um, do we have any questions? Some of them been, have been answered as we've gone through the session. Are there any other questions that someone, someone must have one that they want to ask? Some people typing. Yes, amazing number of vaginal births. Wasn't it incredible with such a small staff? Um, oh, while yeah. we're, we're waiting, Thank you. while, while we're, uh, we're just waiting, I, um, we talked the other day about uh, the women who came um, and who waited to go into labour at the health centre and I wondered how long would they come for? Do they come for a, a day or two or do they just come when they get the first inkling that they're in labour? Uh, towards the end of uh, pregnancy, they come and wait. They come and wait maybe a week. Okay. For their delivery. Right. So you would have a lot of women actually waiting around and about the um, health centre at that time. Yes. Yes. Mm. Not so much at the hospital, but at the health centre, yeah. Yes, you know, in the places round about. Uh -huh. So yes. how far would some of these women come um, to, to birth at the health facilities that you know of? How far would they have to come? Um, it takes two to three days to walk to the mm -hmm. health centre. Mm -hmm. So they wait around for their labour. It's quite a challenge, isn't it? You would want to get there early, wouldn't you? Um, and one yes. of one of these, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sarah has asked, do they receive postnatal care when they return home? Usually, no. At the health sub centre, probably overnight, and they're gone. Right. So then they walk back with their new baby. Yes, they do. They walk back with their new baby. And I, I was noticing too that um, you had high numbers of uh, uh, problems from PPH as well. And we, we just heard from the midwives from India and um, they were saying that one of the, the main problems that uh, caused women to bleed um, and to be so at risk in um, delivery uh, was the rate of anemia. Is that the same for Papua New Guinea? Yes. It is, is it? Yeah. We, we have the same problem here too. Uh -huh. Uh, we, there was a question raised on volunteers. We don't have volunteers here with us. So if anyone is interested to come as a volunteer, can write to the 
the hospital to the Eastern Islands Provincial Health Authority. So did, did I hear you right that you, you do you do or you don't take volunteer midwives? They can write to the Eastern Highlands Provincial Health Authority if they want to come as volunteers. And volunteers are allowed. We accept volunteers. Right. Okay, so they may well um, they may well get a, an opportunity to share some of your um, share some of the issues that you're facing over there. Yes. Um, Okay. We do get volunteers and so is there, is there any are there any other questions for Linda or yeah or Juanus? I'm just scrolling through to see if I've missed any. Okay. You must have satisfied all the questions and answered them. Okay, so I'd like to um, thank you so much. Uh, I think you've done a wonderful job of presenting and it's just wonderful to hear from um, Papua New Guinea. Um, we know what some of the struggles are there for you yourselves and for, for the women and uh, it's wonderful to hear what you're doing in there and to be able to do some research as well that will help out with um, hopefully addressing some of those major challenges in, in your country and how beautiful it is and um, how beautiful people are. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, if there's no further uh, questions, I'll just close, I'll shut the um, recording down. Uh, hello, Jim. Yes, hello. Linda here. I saw a question on the Australian government or the DFAT. Uh, the Australian government DFAT has, uh, for the last few years now, they have sponsored midwifery training here in the country. That is why now we have uh, plenty, uh, we are coming up with plenty of midwives now in the province. So we appreciate and we thank the Australian government for the scholarship they have. They are offering to uh, Papua New Guinea. For, uh, for the scholarship of uh, midwifery training in our university. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't capture that because I clicked off the uh, recording. But that's good to know. Thank you. So I'll just hand. Thank uh, you, Jim. <laughs> thank you. It's lovely to hear you, and it's good to have gotten you on uh, line without too many um, interruptions.